Good afternoon. This is your captain speaking. Just to say there is absolutely nothing to worry about. <laughs> Hello. Captain Creef here again. Still no need to panic. I repeat, there is no need to panic. Or to look out of the windows. <laughs> Everything's fine. Actually, I wasn't being entirely straight with you just now. You see, it's this damnable sleeping sickness of mine. Uh, normally, I control it with a mysterious stimulant from South America, but blast it, my supplies run out. I'm afraid our only hope now is if, by some chance, someone on board knows how to prepare the stimulant and could... Yes, we get the message. Arthur, take Martin his coffee. This week on the show, we're reviewing a radio sitcom called Cabin Pressure. This is produced by the BBC. It's been airing since about 2008. It's written by John Finnamore and directed by David Tyler. And it stars Stephanie Cole, Roger Allen, Benedict Cumberbatch, and John Finnamore. And it's um, uh, about 30 minutes per episode comedy. And it's sort of a sitcom about this really small airline. There's only four people in the, in the whole airline. And sort of the hijinks they get up to as they try to stay in business and uh, you know do all these jobs. Uh, so Steve, as our resident sort of airline buff, what did you think about this? Um, I took some issue with them calling it an airline and, and they, they may do make fun of it like in the show itself because they're like, you can't make a line out of one plane. <laughs> <laughs> like an air, air dot. dot. Yeah. <laughs> it's more like a charter service, really. Yeah. They do. You know, yeah. they don't have any regularly scheduled flights anywhere. Um, so, but th that, that quibble aside, um, well, I actually have another ma much bigger quibble, which is, it has a laugh track. Yes, I'm not sure I would have consented to reviewing this had I known it had a laugh track ahead of time. <laughs> is it is it a laugh track or is it just a live audience? I think it's a live audience because they actually. They, I remember re I read a, a web page. Uh, so don't mean to derail everything. No, 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 I read I read an article on it and they said that what happened after uh, Benedict Cumberbatch started getting popular is like more people started lining up ahead of time. Uh -huh. So I got the impression it's like a live audience. I don't know if that changes your... I think it sounds like a live audience. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't Especially know. since the, the audience sometimes starts laughing before they delivered the punchline, which makes me think that they can see the actors. Oh, like, oh okay. Oh. Yeah. And there's, there's definitely some laughing when, like, you know, the, nothing's being said. Right. So, you know, there's some... Yeah. So, yeah. anyway, just to clarify, if, in case that's... I don't know for sure. Yeah, I don't know if that really helps matters. Yeah. You know? Um, you just don't like laugh tracks in general. Yeah, right? in general. That said, I actually um, I actually did like the show. I, I haven't listened to the whole, like, all three series listen to the first one yeah. um but but no it's actually like pretty funny like i mean it, it, there's some episodes are better than others certainly um there's a you know there's and there's some really great segments in there there's this one you know really amazing one where the like dimwit son of the the lady who owns the airline like okay. tries to like arthur tries to be like like you know to like prepare their, in, their you know their 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 in-flight meals mm -hmm. Um, including one called Surprising Rice, which is amazing. What makes the mashed potato orange? Cooking it in the same saucepan I used to curry the baked beans. And the other option? Aha, my signature dish. Behold, Surprising Rice. <laughs> Good Lord. What are those bits? Ah, you see, Skipper, if you don't mind me saying so, that question is entirely against the spirit of Surprising Rice. <laughs> um... So, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny and, you know, and, and, uh, and I liked it. Um, sometimes the show, I feel like, you know, because they had like a, you know, this was designed for broadcast radio. They had like this 30 minutes to fill and sometimes the content doesn't quite, you know, doesn't feel really fill 30 minutes. So they, they pad it with, you know, random, you know, random jokes here and there. And, uh, you know, that's just, you know, one of these standard feelings of all, of all, you know, media that's destined for broadcast. So they don't know what they can do about it. Um, cause there's only some episodes that felt like they were dragging, dragging on. Uh, but but overall, no, I I liked it. Awesome, Scott. What were your impressions? Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. This is so it's interesting. This isn't really my kind of humor, uh, which makes it all the more surprising that I loved it. <laughs> oh wow! No, it was, right. it's awesome. It, it I was really really surprised. Uh, did I sell it well? By the way, it was really good. Not. I believe you. I, 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 I was I, like, thanks. Oh, <laughs> no, no, I was I was completely surprised. I'm as surprised as you are. <laughs> that I liked it. Because I, one of the things I think you have to know going in is that if you listen to the samples, so I listened to the samples on the store, um, you you don't you there's like a rhythm you have to get into to really appreciate it. And if you just hear the the minute and a half or whatever, you don't understand what the characters are thinking because you start to get used to like what their motivations yeah. are and like what they're you know how they think about things. Um, and 
also there's like these running jokes that go through the episode. So they'll set something at the beginning and like sell it at the end, which you can't get in the sample. And I was just going by the sample. I was like, and I felt the same thing with with the laugh track. I was like, mm, I don't know, I'm not really a sitcom person. And it felt like a lot of the jokes were just throwaway jokes. And it was like, mm, I don't know if this is really my thing. But then you start listening to it and like a couple of things. One, yes, they set up the jokes. So it gets, you know, you can you can have something really funny at the end because of something that kind of did throw away in the beginning. But the other thing is that occasionally there's sort of these pretty like, I don't know, like deep moments where they kind of talk about something more about humanity, more than just the joke of the situation. The I don't know. Are we doing spoilers? I, um, do you want to save the spoilers? Because it is possible couple. to spoil, which was not something that yeah. I think I have a couple. I want to talk yeah, about sure, after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. But, but there are a few things that are actually like kind of heartfelt moments that are not not jokey at all. Yeah. They're actually like pretty interesting insights. Um, but aside from that, I mean, it's freaking hilarious. Like, I, I really, honestly, I don't know if I would have this experience with another show like this on, you know, some other radio show that's sort of comedy oriented. And it's not usually my thing, but this just happened to have the intersection of, by the way, the sound design is really good, which helps me feel like I'm there. And I think that really like sells the, sells the thing. The only thing with the sound design is I think it, because there aren't commercial breaks, Sometimes it's, it can be kind of like startling when like clearly like, you know, they sort of intent, intended to end one act and yeah. then start another one where the setting has changed completely. But there's almost no no beat at all on the actual yeah. like yeah. recording. And it can be a little bit confusing sometimes. Yeah. That was the one thing I think they could have done a bit better of a job in the you know, podcastification of yeah. the, the, you know, the content. But yeah. Yeah. otherwise, no, it's, it's really well done. The point where like I was like walking along, taking a walk and listening to it, and I heard a plank overhead. And I looked, looked yeah. up. <laughs> I, I couldn't see it. And I was like, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> that was part of the show. <laughs> nice. Uh, but but I mean, just to sum up, like there are some moments that are so funny that I'm excited to talk about them. Like the the guy who like deployed the fire engine. The guy I think it was Tunisia. Yeah, the, uh, that whole, the, guy the who French runs guy. The airstrip there. I yeah. lost it. That <laughs> whole thing where he's like, I mean, one of my favorite lines in that episode where he's saying, you know, he uh, Benedict Cumberbatch's character uh, Martin. Yeah. He's he's looking at the list of things that he needs to pay for, and he's like, fire truck. He's like, what's that? And he's like, I don't know a better way to say it than fire truck. <laughs> Anything else? Yes, actually, fire truck. Yes. What well, what do you mean fire truck? I can find no words that describe a fire truck better than fire truck. <laughs> <laughs> Which you need to hear, again. You need to hear in context to understand why that's yeah. so funny. But um, yeah, I, I was totally blown away. Awesome. Yeah, I totally agree with both of you guys. I think it's hilarious. Uh, I heard about this actually on um, a podcast where they were talking about uh, bringing theater to podcasting or like how theaters can use podcasting, and they're talking about just how kind of the radio play is sort of a thing that's kind of coming back for podcasting. And they called this out specifically as not a podcast, but just the idea that actually kind of radio plays never really went away. Just people kind of stopped talking about them. Mm -hmm. And so it's interesting that, you know, this show started in 2008, but this is kind of a format that's not, you don't think of being popular outside yeah. of like the forties or fifties. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, super funny. I think, like you said, the sound design is great. There's lots of great little Foley bits where mm -hmm. you think that like there's, um, there's one episode where uh, there's a lot about the little miniature alcohol bottles yes, on the plane, yes. and about That's the, a plot point. A plot point where the yeah. crack of the um, the cap when you open it, right, and you can hear that yeah. right there when they do it. I'm like, oh, it's so cool, and it really helps like put you there, you know. Um, yeah, and the laugh track, I I see what you mean about you know, well, but I don't. I'm not totally bothered by laugh track, so it didn't bother me too much. But yeah, overall, I think it's super great. I think it's a really cool medium, mm -hmm. um, and. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, we can listen to it in the car. Like, Lauren, I've been listening to the car a whole lot, just like driving here and there. And so it's neat to be able to like enjoy a sitcom in a situation where you wouldn't think you would normally be able to, like driving in the car or like walking the dog or like doing dishes or whatever. So. And, I, and I think I wouldn't nowadays. I mean, there was there was a time when I would sit down and like watch a sitcom. And I don't think I'd want to now because there's so many other things I'd rather be doing. Mm -hmm. So this is probably the case where like I was listening to it at work, you know? Yeah. And I think I'm much more likely to listen Take take this in if it, if it's just audio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do have one sort of like big criticism, and it's not really about the show itself as much as is that it's so hard to buy the show. Like it's really oh, tough no. to get a copy of it. There is oh, so you mean like how to find it on the store? Or? Well, so yeah, well let's see, that's kind of the thing. So the season that or series that we all listen to, series one, is on the iTunes store as a music album. Yep. Then the other ones are there as audiobooks. It's really odd. Well, so like, yeah, yeah, there's there's something. I mean, this is yeah. this kind of gets in the minutia. But you, if you do want to download anything after series one, you have two options. You can do it per episode, which is excruciatingly tedious. Yes. 
or you can just buy the audiobook, which is the you know yeah. two and a half hours together. But the, the confusing thing is that the individual episodes yeah. appear as their own albums, albums in the it's music section of glitch. iTunes. It's yeah. really strange. I think so. Whoever, yeah, set it up. Didn't, yeah. If you're listening from the BBC, sort this out. <laughs> <laughs> just do it. <laughs> we love you. Let it make us make it easier for us to give you our money. Thank you. <laughs> love, Justin. Yes. <laughs> Signed. But yeah, that's no, great. I would totally recommend it. I think it's a fun, uh, different way to you know enjoy a comedy. Yeah, it's awesome. yeah. yeah. And well, going back to the sound design, does the, the actor who voices Douglas sound just like the narrator in Stanley Parable to you I guys? Know. Now listen carefully. This is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Aha! Perhaps you misunderstood. Sense. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's why it sounds actually, so familiar. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, exactly. Like I had the exact same thought. I, actually, it's the not thing, the same guy. I, 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 look, I had to look him up because I, I was, I was almost certain for a little while. He's still his inflection. You know, yeah. it's like it's so spot on. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's funny. And I actually forgot to mention this before, but like it's almost like the, the thing I didn't realize going in is it's almost like Archer. Right, it's the same. It's the same kind of situation Maybe, where yeah. they have like kind of a weird dysfunctional business. Yeah, and there's like the older mother who's kind mm -hmm. of running the show, and there's the one guy who's in charge, but kind of an idiot. Yeah, a little bit, you know. Yeah. And then there's there's like the real idiots, you know. And <laughs> but it, it, it's that same kind of funny where it's just like there's a setting that is relatively normal, but these people are so twisted in different ways. Yeah. Um, but so I, in my mind, it's kind of like Archer plus the Stanley Parable, <laughs> <laughs> which is not a combination I expected was possible. It's just the British accent that gives you the Stanley well, yeah, Parable. But it's the, same, it's the same kind of humor. It's yeah, kind yeah. of the, at least with Douglas, yeah, it's the one. It is, it's very, very dry. Yeah, it's yeah. all about, and the deliveries are fantastic. Mm -hmm. it, it reminds me too, again, like you know, how important Vo you know, people's voice having like really unique voices or in the yeah. time of, you know, the radio, you know, like sh radio shows like this, where it, is, it isn't, you know, such a, as big of a deal these days. Like, I listen to, to audiobooks and they're like, oh, per you know, as performed by some famous actor. And you're like, oh, that was them. I mean, their voice is so, <laughs> voice is so unremarkable that you, you know, you can miss these things. And then you get these phenomenal voices uh, on these radio shows that they're not necessary, but it's, also, it, it, it's, it's its own like you know, art form, just the, the delight of listening to these, you know, these, these voices yeah. that, they, that they deliver. And the characters have to be well written enough that like you can recognize the character based on their mannerisms almost. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah and you know the interesting thing, something I didn't expect again going in that actually changes the tone of the show a little bit is how Douglas always has like a scheme going, which mm -hmm. is not which kind of it, it sets up the plot to work. You know, yeah. and, to the point that like Carolyn actually comments on it. She's like. You always somehow have to have some <laughs> ulterior motive. He's like, I always have at least seven ulterior <laughs> motives. <laughs> but that that's actually adds an interesting mix. So it's not just a bunch of crazy people. It's like there's one who's sort of normal-ish, you know, or at least like has a sense of what's going on versus all these other people that are all over the place. Cool. So it sounds like we're all giving it a thumbs up. Absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. great. All right. So Cabin Pressure, Radio Drama, available at least on iTunes, possibly other places too. We're gonna do And we'll do spoilers here in a minute. Um, so as always, if you want to send us feedback about the show, you can visit our website at lowearthorbit.fm. Uh, there you can find our email address, which is feedback at lowearthorbit.fm. Follow us on Twitter at lowearthshow, and visit our YouTube page at youtube.com slash lowearthshow. Big news. What's the subscriber count? 20. 20! <laughs> we hit 20. <laughs> 20 subscribers. <laughs> which is, you know, it's a, it's a modest goal, but it's also something significant. Since it's a milestone. We started, we started yeah. with zero, you know, I don't know, a couple months ago, mm -hmm. three months ago, I think. Um, so basically, all you know, it's in addition to the subscribers we have on the podcast, so it's extra, and we've been trying to get to 20. We got to 20, which is pretty awesome. So <laughs> Yay for us. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, the other thing real quick I want to mention is that we actually heard back two episodes ago, we did The Room. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the co-founders from Fireproof Games, the developer, uh, wrote to us and he was like, you know, hey, sorry, I didn't really totally love the room. But he said, for sure, check out the room, too. I did wind up finishing the room uh, last weekend and uh, I think it got better. OK. Yeah, I think the game actually improved the further on it went. So, you know. So yeah. he was he was I mean, granted, he's biased, but right, yeah. <laughs> he was he was basically trying to say that, you know, maybe our concerns would be. Yeah resolved uh, in this in the sequel. Like so. This is a common uh, sentiment among creators of things that it we is. review on this <laughs> show. Yeah. Yeah. You're saying call back to Chew. Yeah. yeah. By the way, speaking of that, and just a, another real short sideline, one of the concerns you had was the lack of female characters. Mm -hmm. And the thing that we or at least I figured out, I think I talked to you about is that when they do the flash forward thing in Chew, where they jump ahead, I don't know, whatever it is, a year's worth of issues. What happens is that Tony Chew's sister becomes the main character for some number of issues. And she's like his fraternal twin or something like that. 
um, which I think is part of the reason, you know, the, yeah. the creditor was saying, hey, this gets sorted. So she's somehow involved in NASA and she is the, yeah, I don't mm. know. So, this is involved the alien planet that blows up? I assume so. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no. So That's the long setup. Then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and I think they're, they're almost done with the, they're almost going to end the series. Um, oh. So anyway. Maybe I'll wait till it's finished and then I'll yeah. go through it all the way in one shot. <laughs> the full thing. And we're still, uh, no, we haven't heard back from the afterlife with our, with Archie guys. So mm. we, we, we contacted them. No, I was just throwing okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they clearly don't the listen Archie to the company show. Is, I know. I was expecting. Yeah. Yeah. How many yeah. results can there be for Archie? When you, <laughs> say, when you Google, there's an Archie himself. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway. Cool. All right. So we're going to do spoilers. So if you want to hear that part, stick around. Otherwise, go listen to Cabin Pressure and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Okay. Okay. So we're back from our spoiler break. Uh, so I think Scott, you specifically had something you wanted to talk about spoilers. Yeah, it was interesting. So obviously the majority of the show is a comedy, mm -hmm. but there are these little interludes that kind of revert, reveal more about um, the humanity of the characters. Mm -hmm. The two of them occur to me. One is that they're sort of you. You slowly get the story behind how Carolyn got the airline. Mm -hmm. So there was a divorce eight years ago. Uh, you know, when you start the show, it's eight years ago. And she, I guess, got it as part, part of the settlement. Yeah, something yeah. like that. And so you kind of find out like what she's she's gone through and like her husband tries to buy it back from her. And then eventually Arthur asks her, why do you keep the airline if it's sort of, you know, barely financially stable? And she kind of says, like, you know, I don't want to be a silly old lady, you know, and the airline prevents me from from being irrelevant, basically, which is interesting. The other interesting moment was they were talking i think it was the episode where they had the rich guy who went to soccer games or yeah. rugby games mm -hmm. and they were t i think it's this one where they were talking to arthur and they're kind of like oh you're always happy or you know you're not all you're not actually that happy are you and he's like no no no, I, I really am actually always happy and he's like well that doesn't make sense i mean you're just satisfied he's like no no no. like when you get into the shower it's a perfect temperature i'm happy then and like when it's time to crack your knuckles i'm happy then does it make you happy truly happy oh well come on no one's truly happy i'm truly happy oh god <laughs> no arthur you are cheery no one's interested in the secret of true cheeriness <laughs> that's not true i'm fairly often just completely happy like for instance when you get into a bath quickly and it's just the right temperature and you go, oh, I mean, no one really gets any happier than that. What a depressing thought. No, no, it's not, though, because those sort of things happen all the time. Whereas you're hardly ever, you know, blissfully happy with the love of your life in the moonlight. And when you are, you're too busy worrying about it being over soon. Whereas the bath moments, there's loads of those. Oh, like when you realize your knuckles are ready for cracking. What? Oh. See, I was happy then. And it, it's weird because he kind of he starts to kind of go off and he's obviously the writer for the show, which is interesting. But he starts to kind of go off in this thing. It's like, yeah, you can be with somebody you love, but then you're just worried about it being over. You can always get in the shower and it's the perfect temperature. That's always <laughs> fun. You know, and I just thought that was an interesting little yeah. unexpected twist. To, like, I don't, I don't know how he would characterize those moments, but I, I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Yeah, totally. There's a lot of commentary also about like the, you know, the, the career aspirations of these characters. Yeah. You know, like the. The, you know the pilot and then there's the you know seemingly disgraced co-pilot but i haven't got you got to the point where they've really filled in that backstory yet yeah, yeah i don't know how much there is yeah. but it does seem like he, he well so i think they definitely say he used to be a pilot on a different airline yeah and isn't did. there any more of a reasons unknown exactly but the thing that's confusing to me a little bit there and i'm hoping well maybe they don't explain it but i was hoping they would explain it it's like typically the way that airline senior that seniority works for pilots and airlines is that it's basically like the person who's been there at the longest has high seniority and whoever the high seniority is the captain and this, it was like, I mean, they're they're all pilots, right? There's you know, co-pilot's kind of a weird a weird term because they're they're both piloting the plane, but like, you know, whoever has the highest seniority is the captain, and then second highest seniority is the first officer. But it seems like, from you know, that like um, Martin is the Martin is, Martin's the captain. Cumber. Yeah, yeah, Martin. Is so, so he seems he seems like you know, he's newer at the company. Then oh he is well, yeah uh, mm. yeah because because when they take the Scottish guy yeah, yeah exactly they were like oh yeah it's right we hadn't hired oh, you right. the last yeah. time yeah. we took him and right. everyone else knew who he was including yeah. um, Douglas Douglas yeah, yeah. Douglas, Douglas totally had the whole he had the, he knew the whole routine down he knew how much alcohol this guy should have exactly <laughs> and all, all yeah. this stuff and Martin had you know was was clueless so it seemed that, that I don't know that's maybe that's just you know for plot a plot mm. you know uh, device but yeah. have you finished the season I finished the first season okay and have you. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I've okay. started the second one. Yeah. Because they the thing where they go to the, the house. That's right. There's the yeah. there's the kind of the reveal at the end, which is yeah. where Douglas's wife thinks he's the captain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which is also the, this bigger commentary on people, you know, their, their sort of career, you know, yeah. career aspirations and, you know. Like and there's there's a whole separate thing about Arthur how he he wished he was a you know had been a captain he even went to like yeah. you know, he like went to the interview at the flight school but he just didn't get up like, to go to go actually into the interview because he just didn't think that he could like he could do it you know right yeah. it was like it was like actually like really profoundly sad you know <laughs> yeah. like it's it's you know and, and he wrote that for himself yeah yeah <laughs> which is the really perplexing issue the the funny thing too about that episode where they they end up back at uh, Douglas's house mm. is like up until that point they're all just kind of it's all jokey jokey and they're they pitch those two characters as basically being rivals or whatever mm -hmm. but they do have a small period of time in there where they're kind of like you know they're talking about Douglas's wife and how he went to get this particular sauce mm -hmm. you know and they're kind of yeah, like letting yeah. down the guard a little bit yeah it's only because of that scene that he goes back to the house to drop off that Martin goes back to the house to drop off the sauce and like they have this you know he could have at that point Martin could have said no I'm the I'm the pilot right but, but he doesn't yeah which I thought was an interesting little yeah thing yeah. offered to the yeah. Yeah, I was disappointed at first that the, the show itself wasn't more serialized, but there is like, but there but, is, but, yeah. but, but but there is there is something there, you yeah. know, you know where there are, there are these, you know, they they do push the overall story forward, you yeah. know, even if, even if it's mostly you know encapsulated in kind of monster of the week or mission of the week, whatever yeah. they have, you know, the, in the show. So there is some of the I'm just curious what some of your like favorite like comedy moments are like the two. I mean, first off, by far my favorite is the the guy in the. The runway in Tunisia or wherever it was, yeah. where the, with the whole that whole Settling exchange, <laughs> hilarious. I, I laughed so many times during that episode, particularly with the fire truck and everything. And they're like filling up the plane with like unleaded gasoline, <laughs> and like running it down the highway. Um, but the other one was, I think it's in. Oh, actually, maybe this is season two with the the um, the smuggling. Is that season two? Ooh, it might be season two. Okay. You haven't, you haven't done that. Uh, yeah, there, that there was a really yet. funny. It, it doesn't give anything away where he says like six months ago I start with a cheese sandwich. Mm -hmm. Do you have you? I don't oh, you haven't seen it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't started to yet because I wasn't sure like how to buy it. Like if I should oh, get the audio book okay. version or if I. So I don't know. What did you want to? Oh, getting? I thought you lost. You'd watch the entire thing all. No, I haven't the entire thing all the way through. No, oh, okay. I just went for the audio book. It was too yeah. hard to figure out how to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll do the same thing. Yeah, but the, yeah. The, so the I mean, it's it's such a minor uh, plot point, but basically they actually I won't even tell you what it is. But the key line is he starts with a cheese sandwich and he ends up in this much bigger sort of voyage. Hmm. Let me know when you, you okay. check it out. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> out really funny, you promise me. <laughs> yeah. The whole show seems like kind of hard to explain out of context. Where you're like, yeah. just yeah. sit down, take 30 minutes, listen to an episode. Yeah. And you don't even have to do that. You can do something else. You can, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like when you're driving to work or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to think of what some of the best parts were for me. Yeah. I really loved the part in Italy where Douglas has like the whole switcheroo where he's like, I, I, I can really figure like it all out. Like, we're going to have the auction to meet the movie star and then we'll yeah, use yeah. the shirts as the yes. and then we'll switch it and give her the stateroom and blah, 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 like, blah. But why do I need a stable boy? <laughs> <laughs> I love that part. We of don't. Your <laughs> and your puddings. <laughs> and not only that, but we have paid for the hotel to lay on a team of staff who will be exclusively dedicated to looking after you during your stay. Allow me to introduce your butler. Sadly, none of them can speak any English. Please to meet you. And then, <laughs> and then this is your under butler, your under under butler, and your under butler butler. And this is your chef, your wine waiter, your pastry cook, and your pudding smith. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. <laughs> Are you all right? That's Cremonese dialect for the pleasure's hours. <laughs> Finally, your laundry man, your knife and boots boy, the man whose job it is to fold the end of your loo roll into a V-shape, <laughs> and your stable lad. Why on earth would I want a stable lad? Don't you? I saw your pudding smith. That was amazing. And then was like, your knife and boots boy. I'm like, is that a thing? <laughs> knife and boots? <laughs> One guy? What do you do? Well, knives and boots. <laughs> what? Sounds like a great job. <laughs> it's great. Uh, the the, uh, the match thing was actually, I think it was, was it the first episode? That was the first episode. That was pretty funny. That was one of those setting it up and yeah, kind of paying yeah, it off yeah. things. They did, they did a really good job with, with those, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I really, really like, I mentioned before, I really liked Arthur when he was making the in-flight, you know, meals for them. And yes. he had like the, the, like the orange, like his, his orange dish and his surprising so, rice. So why are the mashed potatoes orange? <laughs> <laughs> 
the, that was actually funny because he's like, you know, the whole point of having two meals is so we, we don't both get food poisoning. Poisoning us both in separate ways is still missing the point. <laughs> but there is, I'll, I'll tell you, with the beginning of series two, he cooks something again. Oh, all right. Uh, I have to it's actually really to. good. I, I was I was just like, I just kept barreling through and it's totally yeah. worth it. Cool. Okay. All right. Um, I do also like, it's sort of a small thing, um, but I like how they, they have like a different like featured location each week yeah so they start by saying this week it's like series two is helsinki is the first mm-hmm. one so it's like this week helsinki and there are some jokes that are like local you know although with the french guy i don't i don't know if that what that was about but well i mean well it's it's it was I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Enough, you missed yeah. a comment about that like you know you weren't the only like you know former great empire yes, or something right. like that yeah. 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 <laughs> another thing that guy says is he that you know he comes in with this heavy french accent which i'm not even gonna attempt to do because i'm horrible <laughs> at it but he's like oh you're french he's like you will find me out <laughs> so, like, Everyone on the show is so sarcastic. I know. <laughs> Part of the humor. Yeah. Is. I really like all the, the guests that they have come in are actually really good. Like ninety yeah. percent. I mean, there's some weird ones, but like for the most part, like they're really good. The Americans had like the uh, the American accent was like something was I, off. I couldn't tell if it's a British person trying to do an American <laughs> accent, and maybe that's what it is. I, I feel, that's, I, that yeah. was my like assumption because it was it, like I couldn't place it, it back anywhere little... actually in the United States. <laughs> yeah. There's something about it. We're just like mm. <laughs> Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, I feel like there was another like really good line that I wanted to talk about. But there's so many. Like I actually, I, I considered starting to like mark them down. Oh, I remember what it is. It's where Arthur keeps asking everyone, "How do airplanes fly?" And like no one can oh, give him. That a was an amazing answer. moment. That was so good. And and actually like educational too. It was yeah. interesting. And but my favorite part about that, I don't know if I'm cutting you off. No. Oh, okay. Is when when the you know Douglas explains it. He's like, well, you know, this 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 this, and he's like, oh, okay. Well, what if the plane's upside down? Can they fly upside down too? He's like. Uh, or he's like, he's like oh, that's why planes can't fly upside down. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And they're like, um, no, they can. actually, they, they can. <laughs> it's like, uh, well, uh, let's go back to what Martin was talking about, which is really fascinating because I don't think they ever actually resolved it. No. In the, yeah, in the they don't. I feel like it, there's, I think there's an XKCD about well, uh, everything, but specifically about this whole thing, right? Where it's like every high school explanation of how planes fly oh, is like wrong. fundamentally <laughs> yeah. wrong on some level. And we basically got all of the different wrong <laughs> versions on this episode. Yeah. Although it's funny because each person they go to has a slightly more accurate, accurate and they never actually... But still wrong. It. It's still wrong, yes. <laughs> yeah. What is the actual answer? I feel like I'm not even going to attempt it. I mean, we could we could just continue their chain here. Yeah. I don't, I don't... I was I was buying the Douglas explanation uh, yeah. until, until the plane's upside down. down thing, I was like, right. oh. I don't know. Do you, it's one of those ones I, I've read it, and I, I, I just I feel like I can never like fully internalize it and like understand it, and I, yeah. I need to spend more time. But it's like it's one of those things where I read it and I'm like, oh, I, I think I understand that, and then later I come back to it like, how does that work again? It's not making. It's, not making yeah. it's like regular expressions. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly the same experience I have with regular expressions. I might be able to grasp it just for the moment that I like I'm reading the tutorial and then it's gone again. <laughs> That's right. No joke. <laughs> yeah, there's so many moments. I yeah. mean, I'm. I, I could I could keep naming them off. Do, by the way, did you guys listen to the Christmas special one? I didn't. Uh-uh. I skipped straight ahead to series two. No, I, don't I don't know if I should check that out. When's the Christmas special happen? Is I it think it's well between going, series two and three. I think so. uh, no, between one and two. I think. Yeah. I oh, mean, really? for, for the most part, like BP Christmas specials tend to just be like one of the episodes. Episodes. yeah, just like one of the episodes basically. Oh, just okay. Part of the canon. You know, for the I couldn't tell series. if it was like critical because it was. I don't know. You know. I mean, certainly, like some. I mean, it t- sometimes they can on other like, other like other television shows they can be extremely critical. Like I think like the Downton Abbey Christmas specials are like they're all pivotal. Yeah, huge know? plot points yeah, in exactly. the specials. Yeah. yeah, you'd be extremely confused if you missed it. That's for the next, <laughs> yeah. next series. It's not like the Star Wars Christmas special. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, you're more confused if you see it. <laughs> exactly. <right. laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, I'm definitely gonna keep listening because they're just, no, it's they're too entertaining yeah. to stop. Now. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty hooked. All right. All right. So, yeah. And your puddings. <laughs>